So we've crashed yet again. But the good news is, we can figure out why. You see, originally I thought I just got a little too loose with the juice. Applied too much throttle while being that lean. Right after the crash, I went back into the pits and chopped it up with some of the coaches. I gave them the rundown of what happened and where, and one of the coaches said that there's a split in the road around the area that I was describing. He said that this might have upset the bike. The whole track felt bumpy, so I didn't even really notice the split he was talking about, to be honest. After reviewing the footage and your comments, some good, some garbage, I believe the crash was caused by a combination of five different variables that were all in play at the same time. Had just one of them not been in play, I think we probably could have made it out of this. All right, so I've highlighted this crack here in case you can't see it, and I showed it in a different angle too. Here it is. Hello, motherfucker. Let's run it back, full speed. And one more time in slow-mo. So we're gonna call that variable one. After I hit that crack, you can see the bike bouncing. Or am I tripping? Am I tripping? Now, I really don't think I did anything egregious here, okay? Even though I'm calling this a variable, I don't think it was that bad. Variable number two, my throttle application. I know the cardinal sin is to never add lean angle while you're adding throttle. My eye might be biased, but I don't think that's what I did. I will admit though, I was not taking lean angle away as I was adding throttle. So inevitably, I ran out of my points of grip. But let's check it out. And by making this throttle, I mean I'm not adding throttle, I'm not rolling off a of throttle, it's remaining constant. Back him up. Back him up. Think. Let's move on to variable three, body position. Now I want you to notice the crack of my ass. Pause. When I'm going right, that seam, it lines up with where the white meets the green on my tail fairing. You see, I'm off to the right, and look where the seam lines up. I'm almost at where that white meets the green. All right, now when we transition left, I don't get my ass all the way back over. I almost hit in the center, and then drop the ass right as I'm getting down. I'm nowhere near off as much as I was before. Now, if we look at the previous lap, lap four, you can see the ass is off a little bit more. Ass being off a little bit more at the same speed means the bike is leaning less, or it should be. It will require less lean angle to take the turn at the same speed. And I took it at the same speed, if not faster here. It was also pointed out that I'm sitting far back in the saddle. I purposefully was sitting all the way back, not knowing any better. Every time I would get over, I would make the conscious effort to sit all the way back. Sitting where I was was giving a rear suspension more to work with. So sitting them so far back was like sitting at the end of a teeter-totter or sitting in the back of the bus when the bus driver hit a bump. Launch mode. Variable four. Shouts out to my man Shreddy for giving a good, thorough description of how the rear suspension works, especially the stock one. Much appreciated. Pause to read. Variable five. The tire. I wasn't running the stickiest of the icky out there. I was running a Michelin Power Cup Evo. Now had I had that Michelin Power Cup 2 or that Pirelli Super Corsa or a Slick, you know, more mechanical grip, I don't think this would have happened. So yeah, out of these five variables, I say you change one, the crash doesn't happen. A stickier tire, it don't happen. I don't apply the throttle the same way I did, it doesn't happen. If I got better body position and I'm leaning a little bit more, it doesn't happen if everything else is the same. What do y'all think? 